Here are seven lesson modeling tips to help reduce cognitive load and ultimately, hopefully improve your student outcomes. Tip number one, I think what it's important to do when we're planning our curriculum delivery is to think carefully about how we will model in the lesson. There are so many different things that teachers can do, online, screens, visualizers, uh, actually modeling through a practical resource such as a piece of art or in the design and technology classroom. Um, sometimes also the most simplest com com concepts are hard to model, so think carefully in your planning. Number two, it's important to model the process. Um, I don't know if anyone's familiar with um, the flow model, Mihal Chikza Mahai, it's well worth uh, looking at carefully in terms of immersion when pupils are lost in their learning. Really important um, that we not just give the Blue Peter example, here's one I made earlier, but show step by step. Uh, stage three, go with the flow. So picking up on Cheeks and Mahai here, um, we have to think very carefully about moving too fast or too slow. So it's always important to regularly assess and check the understanding. And it's really also important to ex uh, exploit modeling as much as possible. Get the students to do it, do it yourself, make examples, uh, work to examples as well as make mistakes. Uh, number five, think out aloud. As you're working on an equation or providing a demonstration, make deliberate mistakes, all those types of things matter. It's really important to uh, model cognitive overload through key concepts, rules and facts. Number six, simplify, break down longer processes uh, by modeling one step at a time. If we were making a table, rather than sh discuss the finished product, I might talk about the legs before we talk about the tabletop, the materials, etc., etc. Uh, number seven, give kids lots of examples. In all classrooms around the world, you're going to get at least three groups. Group one, where students always fly. Group two, students need misconceptions clarified, and then off they go. And then your group three students that always need a bit of extra support. So at least, you know, with the myths of differentiation, we should at least approach our modelling strategies in at least those three groups. Um, there's your seven tips. There's them all on the screen. You can download this resource on the website, take off your own interpretations of the resource, and it'd be a great teacher training resource. So I hope you enjoy it and keep well, I hope you're safe and keep up the good work.